Welcome to part 27 in this series of videos about creating a purchase order system using Blazor and C Sharp. In this part, we'll look at reading settings or constants from appsettings.json. Towards the end of the previous video, deploying to Azure, I speculated that it would be useful to use the fact that we could read different values of the same constant from appsettings.json and appsettings.development.json, depending on whether the app was being run in production or development mode. In this post, we will look at how this can be achieved. The example we will use is the server address for viewing an order included in the body of an email sent to the supplier. So far, we have hard coded this in the code for sending an email in the index page. Whilst we were developing the project, we hard coded this to localhost. And when we were ready to publish the app to Azure, we had to amend this to the actual uh, website address, blazerpurchaseorders.azurewebsites.net, where blazerpurchaseorders.azurewebsites.net was the web address of the site to which the app was published. For development and testing, uh, or production, we could simply have had two lines of code as we've got here, and then committed out the appropriate line depending on whether we were about to publish or develop. The problem with this is that although it's simple, it depends on the programmer remembering to comment out the line of code at the right time. Even with one variable, this is asking for trouble, and with multiple variables, variables this is going to be disastrous. The answer to this problem is to record the value for the constant in two places, for production in appsettings.json and for development in appsettings.development.json. And it just so happens we've got another situation further down where we're looking uh, at using one of two email sending services, either MailKit or SendGrid. And as you can see here, uh, I've got SendGrid commented out and MailKit is re revealed. We could similarly have a setting in app settings uh, for, for this as well. So let's have a look at the code. We'll start by having a look at appsettings.json and how the data in there is configured. You can have any number of items, such as this one, which is called logging. And you can see here, this has got a main level called logging and then a, an open curly brackets, then a second level, log level, and more curly brackets, and then the values. So this has got three nested levels. Uh, allowed hosts, on the other hand, is just one item. Connection strings is two levels. So I'm going to now introduce our settings for the location uh, of, of the server. So if I bring that in here, and what, what we've got here is a top level called application settings and a preview order link route to HTTPS localhost. There's nothing special about that. You could have any, any name you like there. Uh, similarly, you can have any name you like there. You just have to make a note of them. So that's the layout. If we wanted uh, to have something in here for the email uh, sending system, we could simply put in another line that said something along the lines of email sender. It then has a colon and then the, the name of the variable that you want to give. Each of these has got to be finished off by a comma, apart from the last line. So that's the format of the app settings. So we can save that. Now, we're already reading constants from appsettings.json, for example, for the default SQL connection. Uh, and some email settings, such as the email, send email friendly name, uh, and so on. There are further settings up here, which I'm keeping hidden for certain reasons. However, the method used for both seem to entail separate data 
model classes and appear to be more complicated than I hoped. My goal uh, was therefore a simple technique or pattern that doesn't require separate classes or services. Uh, luckily, uh, the answer isn't too complex. So we're going to be using this in index. So let me open the index page. And the first thing we, we need is the using uh, statement at the very top. And it's we're going to be using Microsoft Extensions configuration. This kind of configuration uh, is kind of plumbed in system uh, into .NET that allows us to read settings from app settings and other places. And then we need to inject that. Again, this is all standard stuff. This is all we haven't had to do anything to pre-prepare this. This all comes out of uh, just .NET. So uh, we're injecting iConfiguration and we're giving it a, a name of underscore config. Then in the code section, what we want is to read from app settings.json this item here, preview order link root. So in index, we want a variable to, to, to pick that up or to, to assign that. So let's just have it in there and it's going to be a string and I'm just going to call it server location. The next bit is where the magic seems to come together and we can put this in several places, but a logical place I think would be on the page initialize. I did play around with it having it in the sending email section, but I decided in the end this was the more logical place to have it. And it's simply this line of code here. So we're saying server location, which is this variable we've declared up here, equals underscore config dot get value. And then we say what type of value it is. In this case, it's a string. It could be an integer, double or whatever. And then the what we've got here is the main heading application settings colon preview order link root. And that's it. If we'd gone for one of these multi-tiered levels such as logging log level default in here we would have those three sections separated by by colons so that's actually all that's needed those three lines the uh, using statement the injection or actually it's four lines the injecting the configure i configuration the declaring of the variable and then setting it now we've got that, we can use it. So in the email, what we want here is instead of these two lines, which we're going to comment out, comment that those two lines out. And what we want is in that case, email body, equals email body and you'll see we're replacing this bit up to preview order with server location and then we carry on with the preview order and selected PO number etc. And if we do the same down here we've got we've replaced effectively four lines of code with just two lines we don't have to swap between the two so that's as it stands at the moment going to be picking it up from app settings.json uh, but in development and if we look here it's actually that's probably what we want in uh, app settings.development.json um, so what we'll do is we'll copy that from there. In fact, I'll copy the whole section. And I'll paste it into app settings development.json. So 
So that's correct there. But what we want on index, whoops, sorry, app settings.json is not that, but blazer. purchase orders dot dot net so what will happen now is that if we run the application in development mode the system will look preferentially in app settings dot development dot json and if it finds a value in there it will use it Otherwise, if it doesn't find a value in here, it'll use the settings from app settings.json. However, if it's published, it skips looking in development.json and goes straight to app settings.json and will use the value uh, that we've got in here for the preview order link route. And that's really it. Because we're running it locally. I'll choose this order as usual, email it, open the email client that I'm using, and as you'll see, it's using localhost, and I can click on that and see it, see it locally. So that's it. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, I hope you've been enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm not sure what's coming next. Perhaps it's time to look at the task of posting the order header and order details to the SQL database as a single transaction. But don't hold your breath. That's going to be tricky, I think. Thank you very much for watching anyway. And uh, I hope it won't be too long before I post another video.